Oh, gosh. Hey, everyone. Don't know who's watching or not. Doesn't really seem like anybody. I just kind of went live right now. What I have here is a huge, huge stack of pancakes. I hope you guys can hear me. Uh, this is four buttermilk pancakes that I made, homemade. Um, mm, there's some buttery real maple syrup. This is the Aldi's brand. I'm gonna. I brought the bottle to show you, also in case I need more. But it's this brand. Usually, if you see a bottle that's shaped like this or like a jug, you'll know that it's real. Um, the organic Publix 365 also has, which I kind of prefer the organic but that's just me but I figured this was in Aldi's and I bought it because I wanted to try a roasted Brussels sprout and arugula um, dish with that balsamic vinegar um, candy pecans and ground Dijon mustard with the whole mustard seeds in it so so good I uh, had it for my birthday on Saturday when my brother and sister-in-law and the kids took me out to the Blue Point Oyster Bar and um, You know, I was just joking around with the waitress and I said, you know, I'd love that recipe <laughs> She gave it to me like no problem like that really like added to the whole, you know Experience of the restaurant because some restaurants don't want to give out their recipes and whatnot so I ended up buying that because I wanted to try it and last night I made it and guys it was good. I didn't have candied pecans. I had like crushed nut type pecans, but in any case, it was pretty good. Hey, flip side. Okay, so somebody's here, so I don't feel so like stupid because I don't like talking to a camera when I know nobody's there. But it's funny how I'll go on and do a regular uh, video. Just go figure. And usually this doesn't even work for me, so hopefully it works because it seems like it is. So yeah, I decided I was hungry as hell. I don't know, should I cut in all of this or just one at a time? We'll do all of it. Anyways, yeah, I like uh, collecting, good, I'm not alone. I like collecting um, those tapestries. In fact, I wanted to tell you that Amazon sells them really, really cheap. I think I got mine for like eight to 10 bucks. I got one that has, I think an elephant and the tree of life. And then I got another one that's just like the tree of life or something. I forget because now that they're on the wall, it's like one's on the wall behind me in my bedroom. I never look at it. Mm. That maple syrup is so, so good. I do have, if I can spin around here, napkins on deck. And I have some almond milk because I don't like to drink whole milk anymore. So... And if I did drink regular whole milk, I would probably drink organic because it has a longer shelf life and it has a di whole different taste. Yeah, I know. Look at how thick these things are. Can you see that? They're huge, huge thick. Mm. I actually have a pan that is this size. It's like, I don't know, eight inches maybe? Because I'm not sure if this is like a 10 inch. No, this is like a 12 inch plate. So here comes my stupid cat. Don't you dare try to come over here and steal my pancakes. The other one's over here sleeping. One of the other ones. That's blue, AKA blueberry. And the one that just jumped down was handsome. Don't look at me like that. Ugh. Figures the phone would like, I hung up on them. And now I'm gonna take it off ringer because it's never anything important when they're calling me. How do I turn off the ringer? I don't even know how to turn off my ringer. Record. No, don't want to record nothing. I do want to turn the ringer off though. Uh, there we go. I figured it out. If anything, you'll hear it say answer or whatever. And then they'll probably hang up because that's what happens. Uh, my thing says, if it's important, leave a message. You never leave a message. You better get down from there, Mr. Handsome. Hey. No, <laughs> the Saint Kitty mukbang. I love you too. <laughs> yeah, only this one's being a real jack in the butt. Come on, get get down. Come on. I wish I had a. Sp so he goes behind my computer right now. Come here, handsome. Hey, there's no room up there for you. I have cameras laid out and all kinds of stuff that have been pulling out of the woodwork from way back when. 
And like, he's in my stuff. Get down. Come on, you have to go over there so they can see you over there. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's not put... Always wants to get in on the action. Hey, I want to eat these hot, okay, cat? Don't bother me. Mmm. I think I put too much syrup because it's like really syrupy. I guess because it's pure maple syrup, you don't really need a whole lot. And that stuff on those sweet potatoes that you were eating the other night is awesome. Come on, get down. Get down. Come on. Whee. Oh, turn on the phone. Yeah, I love real maple syrup too. Well, for one thing, I'm trying to stay away from the high fructose corn syrup because that's not good for anybody. And if you look at pancake syrup, it has 53 carbs, which is the same as maple syrup, but it has high fructose corn syrup in it, which maple syrup just has pure maple syrup. But, you know, I had that surgery and I was so sick. And yesterday we had a really good dinner was supposed to be my birthday dinner, but for my birthday dinner, I had eaten too much of these um, Chinese pork buns. So I basically ate my steak last night with this arugula um, roasted Brussels sprouts thing that I made with that maple syrup. And um, I also used uh, balsamic vinegar and the um, spicy Dijon mustard with the whole mustard seeds in there and pecans, and it was so, so very good, and, um, but after I ate, I kind of felt weird, like I was going to either pass out, or something, I just kind of felt shaky, and I've never felt like that before, so I really don't even know what was going on with me, if it was like a reaction I had to what I ate, or if it was just something I was going through, I don't know, but this Having had a body part now, kind of like, well, or whatever you want to call like an organ removed. Um, I don't know. Like things are going to start happening to me, I guess, that I've never experienced before. I'm not allergic to anything. I don't take meds for anything. I've never had anything wrong with me. And if you can remember, I think I was telling everybody, I went to the doctor late March, got my results from blood work done. And even though they only tested the THA or I want to say THC levels, whatever that is. They only did one test. They said my thyroid's fine, even though I suspected for many years that it wasn't. And not only did I suspect it, but having had an MRI done, that doctor told me, go get your thyroid checked, at, you know, ask your primary to check it and made me sign a paper that he notified me of that. So I always worried about it. And that's why I started keto over a year ago. This is not keto. I'm probably going to need to put the little warning down and disclaimer for anybody who thinks I'm eating keto. They do have a keto pancake recipe. I doubt it would taste this good. Oh, look at the stack. Look, look at all that. It's like eating cake. Mm. And I don't know. You know when you bite into a pancake and it makes that like smushy sound? It is so good. It's so moist. <laughs> and see, now, there's some pancake recipes online that want you to put the, after you make it, leave it in the refrigerator overnight. I didn't do that. And I also didn't have buttermilk, so I had to use milk and lemon juice because lemon juice will sour the milk and make it like buttermilk. In case you didn't know that. Mm. I'm in heaven right now. The only thing better right now is if I was stoned and had the munchies and was eating this. But we don't do that today. I don't. You might. <laughs> Louisa might. I miss her and Polly. I haven't been able to watch a lot of people's videos. I've been missing a lot, but I've been watching homestead steaders, farm people. And there's this new thing out. You'd probably enjoy it. It's called the Cog Hill Farm. And I think the channel's Cog Hill Farms. This farmer dances, and he dances good. It reminds me of, like, something you would see in, like, um, uh, what was that show? 
with the America's Got Talent or something like that. You know, like he's really, really super good. And he challenged everybody on May 8th for this dance off. So I've been seeing it, but I finally today clicked on one of them and it was so good. So there's a playlist of like 19 different ones that have entered so far. And some of them are just so good and they got their kids involved. Um, it's, it's like, I don't know, kind of reminds me of that thing. There used to be, I forget what it was called and everybody was doing it. It was uh, a certain kind of dance or song and um, something shuffle. What's that? It was something shuffle. Anyways. And now this is like going to become a YouTube, a new YouTube sensation. It's called the Cog Hill Farmers Dance. Dance. Hold on. Let me look. Cog. No, I won't come up open. I guess because I'm on here live, but it's Cog Hill Farm Dance. Dance Homesteaders Challenge. I don't know if you're a homesteader or a gardener or whatever he said, this challenge is for you. And I don't know what you're supposed to win, but it sure looks fun. Keep me occupied. I'm supposed to do a couple of things today. One is call my bank. I noticed a, a charge aside from the fact that they're charging me $12 a month for a service fee. Whenever I don't have at least $200 deposited in my account through an ACH deposit, which I have hooked up through the company I do work for, but I haven't been working, they'll charge me $200. doesn't matter that I can deposit $1,000 or $500 or whatever from another bank from a savings account into there. Um, if it's not an ACH deposit, they still want to charge me. So then I see right below that $12 charge is a $3 charge for check images. And I'm like, I didn't ask for no check image. What the heck is this? So now when I go online, which I only bank online and I only usually use the ATM, I never really go inside the banks. So they're making a lot of money off of me because they don't do jack for me. But it says that when they send me my paper statements, They've been sending underneath wherever I have written a check, which is once in a blue moon, maybe three a year, if that. It'll show a little image of the check. Apparently, and I didn't know this, and this is one of the reasons why I hate Bank of America, is they never notified me that such a service is an extra charge. And I don't know if that for the month or for the year, and how long have they been charging me that? I need to go back now and look at all my statements, but I need to call them and tell them, I don't want that crap. I didn't know there was a fee for it. Nobody ever told me about it to look for it in my online banking. So how the heck did I know that there was an option? And I want my money back, because y'all don't do nothing. And if you think that little bit of ink is gonna cost me $3, even a year, let alone a month, because how many checks do I write? So how many of that little tiny icon looking shape size check they're gonna charge me three dollars uh-uh it ain't happening so i'm pissed about that and i would have gotten rid of bank of america a long time ago because i do bank at actually three other banks i got the bank that i had my loan through my car they gave me a savings account when i got my car then i got another bank which i changed to well wanted to change to fully um, when Bank of America somehow or another allowed my account to get used twice at two of their ATMs, once in Chicago, and another time it happened at two ATMs, once in California. And I've never been to California, and I've never been to Illinois, anywhere, even Chicago. So, you know, they try to say, oh, did you ever get rid of, did you ever give anybody your card or your passcode? And I'm like, no, the only time I ever let the card out of my sight is if I went to a restaurant, which is very rare, and give it to the waitress who would take it and scan it or run it or whatever, and then bring it back to the table. And then I sign and put the tip and whatever. I hadn't done that. It actually happened twice after I went to this one big super Walmart that we have in town. Well, not in my town, but the next town over. It's a big, big one. And in any case, man, these things are filling. <laughs> so 
both times, it seems like I went to that stupid Walmart. And after that, my card got hacked and, and they got the card. So because they were so naive about the possibility of, oh, you know, I watch movies and I see things on TV and people are able to produce card numbers and somehow or another hack the passcode because the passcode's in my head. So even if somebody got a hold of my card, how did they get the pin code to use it at an ATM? And how do you use it at an ATM? You have to have a card. It's not like you just have a number, like if you were making a purchase online. So the stupidity of this woman at the fraud department, even making such dumb suggestions to me, I guess she was testing me. I said, you know what? The hell with this bank. And I went over to the, to the credit union bank, which is Suncoast. And I got an account there. And, you know, Suncoast doesn't charge me anything. All I have to do is leave $5 in my savings account. Um, they do require you open a savings account. But as long as you have a savings account, you can have your checking account. There's no fees. There's no monthly fees. They don't have all those high, you know, like if I did happen to get a return check item or something. They don't charge you all these fees that Bank of America charges. Also, you don't have to stand in the hellish line that you have to stand in if you ever have to use the teller at Bank of America. And that's why I don't use the teller. But the only reason that I keep them is because I rent my house. My landlord lives in Canada. He banks with Bank of America. And for six years now, it'll be the end of this month, actually, six years, I've been putting money into his account. From Well, I used to pay like a cashier's check, like I was depositing it direct in his account, but they stopped that a long time ago. So I literally have to put the money in my account, then transfer it over to his account, but then it's automatic. It's the only reason I keep it. So when I think my rent is one thing every month, I need to add that fee in there that I pay $12 every month. Well, 15 if you include that $3 I might have been being charged every month. I don't know, but I ain't doing it no more. So I figure everybody, you're up early. Isn't it like an hour? Yes, yeah, so it was like 936 where you are. I know some people are sleeping. I don't know when is a good time to come on here. I think a good time is whenever you're eating time, right? Mm. This is definitely a mukbang, not a nibble bong, because there's a lot of food here. I probably still have half the pancake. Look. Pretty much. I put a good dent in it. So, what's today? Wednesday? Yeah, so tomorrow I have to drive about 40 miles to the other side of town and go get my car an oil change. I might call you because I'll be bored and I don't have anything to do while they're doing their oil change. That is if I can get a signal on my phone. I have the worst phone service out here. Mm. You know, it's funny. In the beginning, it was like so soaked with maple syrup that it was oozing out. And now, and maybe it's just this part of it. I don't know. It's like it's dry. It's not, not dry, but it's not as oozy with maple syrup. But it's still just, just perfectly sweet. I'm not going to add anything to it. But, oh, my God. And thanks for the like. See, this is how you're still the only one here. And I'm almost 19 minutes into um, chowing down here on the pancakes. I was going to add blueberries or pecans. And I said, nah, let me not push my luck. It's funny. Every one of these pancakes was made with butter you know, in the pan. So it's got a pretty good amount of fat. Plus the milk and all that, that makes it, the flour isn't good for you. So if you're on keto or you do, you know, grain free, you, you don't want the flour. Anyways, what I was about to say, I don't even know. I have a horny cat mouse. Can you hear the cat crying in the background? That would be Pickle. She's probably out there rubbing up against the dog. The female dog I have. 
I don't know if you can hear that. Mm. Anyways, so 20 minutes in, I'm almost done eating this. But so many times I eat something and then I wanted to go live. It was so easy to go live this time. Except for something's messing up with the, um, the window. I thought I lost you. Everything just was like going whoop. And I don't know if it was the, maybe the keyboard. I don't know. I'm going to look back at this video and laugh how I forgot my train of thought, what I was going to say. All because the horny cat was meowing. I heard that. <laughs> my thoughts went out the window. You know, that hasn't happened to me since back in my 420 days. We used to have it all the time then. Like, what were we just talking about? And then we'd laugh. And it'd be so funny. Or like my brother and I when we were kids. Well, not kids, but younger. Younger teenagers. And then we'd smoke. Then we'd be sitting and watching like MTV or something. News would come on. Nothing funny or anything. But for some reason, one of us would just start laughing for no reason. And then the other one would start laughing for no reason. And it'd be like 15 minutes of just laughing for no reason. I miss those days. I just want to sit and laugh, you know, and have a good time. I miss that. Oh, my God. You were typing to me, and I had not seen anything other than when you put, I love real maple. Now I got to catch up. Yeah. Well, potatoes make me happy, too. Oh, thank you. This is a Walmart special. Oh, my bruise is, that's about all that's left of my bruise. Um, I have maybe four different blouses, all different. Um, one has stripes. It's, it's blue stripes on white. The other one is kind of like this, but beige with kind of pink and white flowers. And then there's another one that's white with blue flowers. And it, and, and it has this kind of weird, I don't know how you, you know, how bat wings or something. But you could wear it like this, which I don't like to do on camera because some people will say, oh, she's naked. I don't want to get flagged for nothing. Darn YouTube is really funny these days. You're hungry again. Now you should eat. <laughs> Thank you. I do love to cook. I want to do a cooking show. I got me a red chef's hat and I couldn't find like a proper chef jacket. So I bought one of those like nurse type jacket or whatever you call those, like a nurse's uniform, but I bought it in black and I really wanted to do live streaming. I got me a Twitch account. I also got Patreon, but I don't really understand how all that, I don't, I don't feel I'm worth paying to do anything that I do. I really want to give what I got away because it didn't cost me nothing to learn it. Yeah, pickle is horny. <laughs> if nobody knew the conversation and just saw that comment, they would probably um, crack up laughing. That sounded trollish. Yeah, it did. <laughs> when you took psych meds, you were really bad. What do you mean, bad at eating or or laughing or what? I'll get that. I'm getting to the point where I think I need some psych meds. Oh, forgetting. You know, GH, he, he, he's on um, the, that, the, what is it called? He, he takes uh, hydroxypam. And Deluxetine, which is Dal Pro, Dal, 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 Dal Prolex. I forget what, how to say it. And his memory is awesome. Like, his hearing sucks. Unless that's just selective and he doesn't want to hear what I got to say. But, like, test taking and things like that. He's awesome. Me? I still can't remember shit. I call it craft. Can't remember a freaking thing. Because literally, I can't remember a freaking thing. I mean, it could just be something so simple that if I don't write it down, 
I'll forget about it. Like I had to send him a text about me going this Thursday, which I had made the appointment on my birthday on Monday because I wanted to go Monday, but they were like, well, you'll probably sit there till 5.30. And I'm like, I'm not going to sit there on my birthday, waste my whole birthday day, just sitting there waiting for an oil change, even though I didn't have anything else planned. But I made an appointment to take it in at 2.30 in the afternoon tomorrow. And what? is there something there? There is something there. I don't know what it is. Should have checked that before I got on here. Oh, I feel it, but I don't know. I, I don't know. Anyways, <clears throat> you're the one in charge of remembering. Yeah, well, you see, I'm supposed to be the one in charge of remembering in this house because, you know, I can remember when he screws up something or somebody screws up, but I can't remember something that's important that, like, you know, I write everything down in a calendar when everything is due and needs to be paid. Otherwise, I won't pay it on time. I'll screw up. I still screwed up. This month, it really wasn't my fault, though. I have one credit card through the company, the bank, that I have my car through. And I put my husband's auto insurance for his truck on the card. But I never remember, do I... Did I put it on that or did I put it on my Bank of America account and have them take it out automatically every month? And then they take the payment around the 1st, and then the payment's usually due on the card around the 6th, and if I pay it on time, I don't pay any interest rate. And I only have to pay $25, but I always pay it in full so I don't have an interest rate and I don't have a, a carry balance. I don't know what happened when the time I looked at it to see what the bill might have been to write it down in the calendar... It hadn't posted yet is what happened. So I didn't think anything of it. They didn't send me their normal thing. They'd been sending a lot of emails because they switched over to their payment system. Somehow or another, I missed the mark and I didn't pay it. And then I get a message from them saying, oh, your payment was due on the 6th. Oops. Well, now it's already late. So, But I have a grace period. That's another thing I'm going to do today. I'm going to pay that. Oh, my God. I can't believe I ate. All of it, just about. And I will eat all of it. I don't like wasting food. Oh, you like my cup? Yeah. I know Sarge would like it. I hope she's doing okay, her and Mrs. Sarge and the kids. I reached out to her the other day, thanks to um, another subscriber. Actually, it was to the Fluffy Dub video that I did with... Um, was it with her and Sarge? No, that was another video I did. See, my memory sucks. But anyways, now I got a new subscriber, which is that nice lady. And she and I were texting back and forth. And, you know, she was really concerned about the Sarges and whatnot because she hadn't seen anything since their video that they did in the um, fishing on the farm. Look at this big guy. Would you know that that cat weighs twice as much as the one he's messing with right now? <laughs> She weighs about 10, point, 10 pounds, 6 ounces, and he weighs 18 point, almost 19 pounds at last I checked. He's constantly eating. He's he's looking. No, you're not coming. Hold on. Let me go let him out. You can go eat your food out there. Go. And then there's this other one, Nova. Nova, you want to come in here? Come on. This is November. She comes in. Come on. Oh, now you're just going to sit there and kiss each other? She, we call her grumpy face because she does not like when you touch her or anything. She's really pretty. She's a calico. So when you, when you touch her, Nova, look up. She's got that grumpy face look like the grumpy cat. <laughs> but when you touch her, she gets really grumpy face. She makes this face like, she's like don't touch me. She hates being touched. She's real grumpy. She'll only want to be touched if I have those kitty treats. And she's like, those are like crack to her. I do too. When I was a little girl, I had one. It was mixed with Maine Coon. It was real fluffy. Same colors as this one. I never knew what happened to her. I don't know if somebody stole her or something, but one day she just went around. And I used to always think of that cat. Her name was Cheyenne. But this cat... We got her as a baby in November, so I named her November, but we nicknamed her, we call her Nova. They all have nicknames, like, that's Blueberry. And I know, it's funny, I got cats with food names. There's Blueberry and there's Pickle, but Pickle's real name is Magic. 
but I've always called her pickle for some reason. I don't know. It just kind of came out one day and that's how it is. And it's just like with her, she looks like a frosted blueberry. She's one of those like Russian gray, but she's more tabby. Cause like, if you really look close, she's got some stripes on her tail and they all have an M on their head of some sort. Even this one, even handsome, the big guy, but this one here, she has the weirdest like Kermit the frog eyes. They're so green and so just weird. I wish she'd look up. Blueberry. Blue blue. Bluey. What you doing? You wanna say hi? She opened her eyes, but you wanna say hi? Let me look up. Let's see if I give her something. You wanna see what mommy's got? You probably won't eat it. What? She, you probably couldn't see it, but she just had that grumpy face. I don't know. Yeah, they're, they're really cute. You had a cat named Dolly. Yeah. Well, I have six, actually. So you just saw three. And then I have Callie, which is a, a tabby, kind of like Handsome is, but he's a marble bangle and she's more of a liger, which is a leopard tiger. She's got leopard spots and tiger. And she's the oldest that I have. He's the second oldest. And then I would say, and then I have one in the room, which is black and white. Like they, I guess they call that a tuxedo cat and we call her pancake. So there goes another food item. Um, but that her name's Domino. And then am I missing one? Who am I missing? No, that's it. Yeah, so these three, and then Pickle, Pancake, and Callie. So, and then I have the two big dogs, which one of these, if I let them in here, all hell's going to break loose, but one day I'm going to show them all off. But the most funniest one is my bird, Chico, which you don't hear him screaming because I'm eating in here, but if I was out there or cooking, he's always, I mean, I'm sure you've seen the video where he's just screaming and he wants to be fed and... If you don't like me, he'll just say you, you know. I can't help it. I didn't teach it to him. And I don't know why he says it, but he says it at the most appropriate times. Yeah. Oh, I'm about to press on the button. I actually ate it all. He's got personality. Yeah, he's he's a little he's a little man in in, in a bird suit or something. I, I we don't we don't understand it. He just, he's out there right now rattling his cage. Like he'll just, he'll hold on to the door with his beak and he'll shake and shake and shake and he'll do that for hours and it's annoying. And we've tried to tie everything down real tight so that it doesn't rattle as much, but I can't stop him from doing it. I hear it though. It's like, shh. He's a nut. Ugh. See, one thing I got to say about this milk, like I like cooking with it and stuff, but drinking it straight, I hardly even filled up the cup. It's not my favorite thing to do. I just like now I'm like, eh, don't really care for any more milk. Anyways, thanks for eating with me, Flipside, because um, I don't know. I don't really like eating alone. I felt like coming on here. I got to get some work done, do some stuff today. I got to try to get back to work anyways. Like after they did what they did to me in that hospital, uh, I don't know. I'm never going to be the same again. Like God forbid I should have to go to a hospital. I'm, I'm just shook. I just, I have like a phobia of hospitals to begin with. And then maybe that's why, like I somehow, my intuition knew that one day I was going to end up in the hospital and they were going to treat me like dog shit and make me go through the most hellacious pain of my life and not keep up on my pain meds when scheduled and then treat me as if like I was just like I didn't matter and but don't move don't get out of bed because promise us you'll call us because you need assistance and leave me there for an hour like hello Next time, leave me something to pee in. I don't care if it's the damn ice pitcher. I couldn't reach anything. They didn't leave me with anything. And then it didn't come. And and the and I would push the, the buzzer, and they wouldn't come. And the buzzer didn't work for the TV. Uh, the things on the bed only worked on one side. 
The TV was one of these things on an accordion arm that had like a screen, maybe 10 inches, if that. It wasn't no bigger than my Kindle. And I'm like, seriously? This sucks. And then these alarms keep going off and nobody's coming to turn them off. And I could turn them off, but it was only temporary. So I don't know. Now they want me to go back for my follow-up because it was two weeks on Monday on my birthday. Yeah. I just, I just like, who makes them the authority? I know how I feel my whole entire life. I've stayed away from hospitals and except for one time I did go to a hospital in Hollywood I think it was in the beginning when my husband and I got married way back in the early 90s, maybe early to, yeah, probably early 90s. And um, I, don't rem- I don't even remember what it was. I had some sort of a, an attack or, or what it was, and I, I wasn't admitted. It was something that they took care of right then and there. And I remember my best friend, uh, Charlotte, had come up, her and her daughter, when her daughter was real, real tiny. Her daughter now has a daughter who just turned seven, I think. And, you know, all these life changes making me feel old. But um, she came up and I remember her wheeling me out. But I was so drugged up and whatever they had given me there in the hospital for the pain that I could barely remember. I don't even remember what I went in there for. That was the only time, though. But again, I kept all my parts. No organs removed. No, no nothing. Never had any stitches. Um, and then, you know, oh, and there was this one like psych doctor because once I was going through some really bad, well, I wasn't going through something. I put myself through something. I was taking some kind of pill there that was a hallucinogenic of what not. And it takes from the serotonin in, in, in your brain, whatever. And I started acting really fruity and wigging out and and hurting myself. I literally wanted, I was smoking cigarettes back then and I wanted to burn myself with cigarettes and I knew something was wrong and I didn't want my husband to get accused. So I, on my own, sought the advice of like one of these psych doctors who was paid for by the state because I couldn't, you know, it was, it, it was based upon your income levels or something. So I remember we drove quite a bit of ways to go see this doctor. And I remember he had given me a sample pack of Paxil, which I probably have somewhere, even though it's probably so over expired, like 10 times over by now, because this was so many years ago, that he said, oh, we can take care of this in one of two ways, with counseling or with counseling and drugs. And I'm like, well, if I can do it without the drugs and just counseling, why are you offering me the drugs? It just, and he did, he handed me this like samples that he had there in his office, which I know how, yeah, I know how, you know, pharmaceutical companies, they come into these doctor's offices and they give samples and then the doctors give samples because even when my husband first started going to see a psych doctor for himself, they were giving him what was in the office. And then when he couldn't get any more because they didn't have any more to give in the office, they wanted him to have it prescribed. Guess what? It wasn't something that his insurance covered. So we didn't have the cash to pay for it. They had to put him on something else. And then so the you know, beginning of the uh, elevation of um, screwing up his whole entire system and making his mind even more than it already was, started. <clears throat> so they went from giving him Seroquel, XR, uh, that made him sleep for 19 hours. He was on like 200 milligrams. I told the doctor, you got to give him something else because this thing is making him sleep 19 hours. She goes and ups his dose to 400 milligrams. Are you kidding me? If 200 milligrams is already making him sleep, for 19 hours, why would you up his dose to 400 milligrams? Do you want him to sleep like 36 hours? I didn't get it. I I didn't understand it then. I don't understand it now. And still, like, I try to be his advocate because he never reads his counterindications, um, whatever they're called, you know, the the, the symptoms of the stuff that you can get when you take the medicine. Yeah, it was horrible. His friend took it and said he would end up uh, walking in his sleep and he would end up like walking or he lived in a condominium on the beach with like uh, like a high rise. And he would end up downstairs walking the parking lot in his underwear. His wife would have to come after him and wake him up and, and bring him back in the house because some of the neighbors is actually his mother-in-law, his wife's mother lived in the same building. And some of the neighbors, I guess they knew him, would call him and say, hey, your husband's down here in his underwear acting crazy. And I seen my husband doing stuff like that too, like walk, sleep eating, you know, going to the refrigerator. He still does that now on the medicine he's on. He also talks in his sleep and he doesn't just talk in his sleep. He has whole conversations. Like, I don't know if you've ever been to a meeting 
um, for like a 12 step meeting where everybody's sitting in a circle and, you know, hi, my name is so-and-so and I'm an addict or hi, my name is so-and-so and I'm an alcoholic. And he literally, I, I have it somewhere on video and he says he doesn't mind if I actually post it one day on a video, but he literally is like, hi, my name is so-and-so. He's like doing all the different people's voices and stuff. And he's like making fun of them though. It's kind of, it's so hilarious, but it's sad because like, we don't make fun of the fellowships. We, you know, we respect the fellowships. We know that they do help save lives, but <laughs> in his sleep, he is like so freaking hilarious. It's like sometimes I'm like, is he doing it deliberately just to kind of entertain me? But he's not that funny normally. He's not that funny um, unless he's sleeping. It's kind of weird. And it is his meds that actually have been making him do that. So he's been doing that for years. But yeah, and being exhausted all the time. He does, um, he's sl- like, he used to snore really bad, but then after he had the weight loss surgery and he lost all that weight, even though he's still kind of chubby now because he still drinks soda, I notice um, if he does something he's not supposed to do because he still does uh, every now and again, he'll snore really bad. And the talking in his sleep because he's mixing it, obviously, with whatever else he's doing with psych meds, which you're not supposed to do, it'll be worse. Like, But these whole conversations that he also speaks Spanish, but he speaks perfect English. His Spanish, he says, sucks. But when he's sleeping, he'll be fighting in his sleep and doing it in Spanish. So he'll be talking in Spanish, talking in English. It's it's kind of funny. Um, he actually did a sleep apnea test pre uh, the weight loss surgery. And what was really funny about that was the lady who had to stay you know, at the place that watches you while you sleep to do the test said she wished all her patients were like him because she usually is either falling asleep or trying to read a book or do something else to stay awake because most patients are very boring and there's really nothing to watch. But him, he was nonstop talking in his sleep and going through so much shit that she said it was the most entertaining patient she ever had. And I believe it, you know, because like wherever he goes somewhere or stays somewhere, or stays some- with somebody in their house or in a hotel, like he shared hotels with friends to go to conventions and stuff because it's cheaper that way. And literally like, oh, my God, have you ever heard this guy talk in his sleep? And it's so funny. Hey, I hope I don't talk in my sleep like that, at least not, not till now. But he does say I snore. Oh, my God. Yeah. When if you drink with like it says it right on there, do not drink with this medicine. And I don't know what he does because I don't want to know. I just want him to stop doing whatever he does because I don't do anything. Next month, June 26 will be eight years that I've not done anything other than what's been prescribed to me during this stupid incident here. And um, and it was scary because I didn't, you know, I felt like I had something that was lingering, the pain that I was in that it wasn't going to go away. Cause of course I was Googling shit and people were complaining about, you know, there was one lady that had, had gallbladder removal surgery in 1970. Obviously they didn't do laparoscopic back then, but she's saying about here, here it was in 2017. She posted to this Google post I saw saying, yeah, uh, I still have pain and discomfort and blah, 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 blah. And this is what, you know, kind of helps or whatever. But I'm like, God, I really don't want to have this pain. It was like in my back. I'm kind of feeling it right now. I'm just sitting here, but it was in my back right behind. If I touch it right now, it's, it, it's tender. And if hubby just slightly rubbed his hand across my back, it gave me so much comfort. And I, we're talking not even a massage, just barely rubbing his hand up and down my back would comfort it. It was the oddest thing. And thankfully I woke up Saturday and it was gone. Yeah, no more, man. Uh, that's why I'm saying like, you know, drugs are just like, it's just a symptom of the disease of addiction. I, I, I'm addicted to many things, but I replace the unhealthy with the healthy or healthier. I don't want to say it's necessarily healthy to go out and spend, uh, you know, $50 or $30 or $20 here and there on a tapestry or something that has an elephant on it because I collect elephants or something that has owls because I like owls or dragons because I love dragons. You know, there's things that I have in here, all this art, art shit. I want to like maybe put together a bunch of stuff and start selling it off because I have so much crap. I get it. I get into it and buy a shitload of it to do it. And then I just, it sits there. I must have on this shelf over here alone, I think a good 200 rubber stamps. And then in that little behind my purse there, I don't know if you can see that little, um, 
you know, it looks like a little DVD holder back there. If you can see that it goes from the top to the bottom and it's probably a little more than half full. And they're all rubber stamps in there from a set. Maybe I bought a magazine or something and it came with it. In the back wall, we got paint. So there's paint all up there, but then I have three Sterilite drawers, the big ones that, that you can use them as like sock dressers or whatever. They're a good, I don't know, two feet wide maybe by a foot deep. One whole drawer alone full with paints and those wax rubs, you know, like iridescent and metallic. On the, on the far, I need to go around my camera one day. I just do a vlog. Then I have these two magnet boards that I made that are like two feet by maybe nine inches wide that are on the closet doors. They're all die cuts that I've gotten like from whatever that China, what is that thing called that I was all, ooh, I don't even remember because I haven't shopped there in a while, but it's some Chinese thing. Most of them were bought Chinese, but a lot of them were, I got them from other places. Then I have uh, markers and I have embossing powders and felt powders and all kinds of crap. Just And then all these die cut things for these machines, which are really expensive. They're thick and they're for cutting fabrics and leather. And I love my house too. And I got to move. It sucks. But my landlord told me, <clears throat> just a couple weeks ago, he's not going to renew my lease. Not because I'm not, he said, I'm a great tenant. He loves us. We've never been late. We've lived here. It'll be six years, May 30th, but he's going to only write me a month to month, uh, agreement because he might have to sell the house because it looks like things on his end, you know, circumstances on his end are changing and he doesn't want to be tied in. I know what it is probably more likely, um, what I'm paying here in rent, I, di I didn't want him to raise my rent again because last year he just like, hey, $200 out of nowhere. I'm still paying a lot less than what now he could be getting for this house. And I know this by looking for other houses to rent. But, you know, he's probably going to try to re-rent it to somebody else. I don't, I don't know. But he could be getting a lot more than what I'm paying. Outside of the fact that I don't really want to live here anymore because my neighbors in front of me have a little dog that comes and antagonizes my dog, jumps up in the window literally has broken my screen three times now and some bird houses and things that I put in the way. So she doesn't get up there. She just knocks it down. She don't care. They don't keep an eye on that dog or they have nurses or somebody that comes over and dog gets out, comes over here. And my dogs have been so close to just jumping through the window and going after that little antagonizing shit of a dog. Um, so outside of that, they're good people though. And we do talk to them, but no, it's not cool. And I definitely don't know how long I care to live across the street from that. Behind me, they're always having parties on like Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, and they'll do it till two, three o'clock in the morning. They drink and they're Cuban and they're, there's, I'll say all of them are loud, but there's one lady over there. You always hear her voice above everybody else's. It's one of those nagging ah, yeah, 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 kind of, and when she's drunk, Oh my God. It's like, you want to go over there and stuff something in her mouth that like will stick in there for, you know, ever. And then like run you know, because I can't handle it. Hubby calls the cops like every time because he has to work the next day and nobody should have to listen to that after a certain hour. We do have noise ordinance uh, rules around here next to them also behind, but on the opposite side, is a guy that every morning at around five thirty, six o'clock in the morning, I don't know. The sun's not even up yet. He's like, Whistling, woo, 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 I can't whistle, whatever. Wilson, Wilson, I mean, if you named me Wilson and I was a dog, I'd probably run away also, but I think that's what happens. The dog runs away every night or something, gets out. I don't know, I don't leave my dogs out. My my dogs are inside dogs. So I don't expect them to get out. One time they did, a few months back, <sighs> hubby and I had a major heart attack and it happened on a night when it was the coldest night ever here in Florida. It was like 34 degrees. And the female duchess, she came home at around 10, 10 30 at night. And that then I really got scared because him and her have never been apart. And I got him when he was a three week old puppy. And I'm thinking he doesn't know how to be a dog. He thinks he's a cat. I mean, is he ever going to find his way home? And somebody reported on this neighborhood thing that they had seen him uh, 10 miles from here, actually, way down by this park that we have. It's like a like a public swimming pool place where you can go and you can pay a couple of dollars and use the, the pool. 
and there's a park there and they have like, you know, ball, they play ball, baseball, basketball, whatever. So <clears throat> he couldn't walk for a few days after that, but I came around the corner at two 30 in the morning coming for a refill of coffee. Cause I was not coming home until I found my dog. And there he was at the end of the block looking towards my house, Maybe he had caught the scent of his sister or something, and he wasn't sure, do I go this way or that way? When I pulled up, he got so scared that he still didn't even realize who I was. He started to run away, ends up in the neighbor's yard, and I have his biscuits, and I call him. And all of a sudden, he recognized me, and he came to me and was crying and freaking out, like, oh, my God, Mommy, I thought I was never going to find my way home to you. And they haven't run out again since. Well, they did one day with my husband, but he got them, but yeah. My neighbor, what happened was they, the nurse guy saw them and lunged at them to scare them away because he said he didn't recognize that they were my dogs. You wouldn't recognize that they were my dogs. I don't let my dogs out. They don't go out the front door. Never. I have a big fenced in yard in the back and that's where they go. I actually paid and put that fence in this yard to this house because of my dogs. I paid for that. So my landlord benefits, but... At the time, I figured I'm here. I need it. I'm going to benefit because me nor my mom could walk these dogs. They would walk us. So we paid, um, it was like 3500 or something like that to put this fence up. And so, hey, the house is fenced. But to get a house even this size, let alone without a fence, not for what we're currently paying. So, And I know that now because I'm looking. But I wanted to buy. I wanted to move out of here. I wanted to maybe go to Georgia get me a homestead, you know, a nice little at least acre, if not a little more. And just, you know, that would be where I would retire. And um, yeah, thank you. I pray that I find a great place too. But right now, like hubby got a new job and not where like I really want to base my future plans upon anything he might do because he's not really reliable sometimes in that department. But, um, you know, I, I really, I can't afford to move and do what I want to do. And to just find a place doesn't necessarily mean it's a place that's going to be to my exact liking. Like if I knew I had X amount of money to spend, um, you know, I would do it, but, or even, you know, I have excellent credit, but I can't get a loan when it comes to a bank because I'm listed as self-employed. And when you're listed as self-employed, they look at your taxes. And when you know, I, I don't do my taxes. My accountant does my taxes, but apparently it, it appears as though I don't make enough money to even afford the car I drive. So my debt to income ratio um, with that car is what hurts me, but I don't have the money to pay off the car and not have the car. So, you know, as it stands, good credit or not, excellent credit, even the, even so, it's not going to help me when it comes to buying a house if I want to do throw, uh, do so traditionally through, you know, through a mortgage lender and you know, just put a down payment. So I'm, I'm limited. I'm, I'm limited. And if I go and I move right now um, into someplace else, it's going to take a big chunk of what money I do have saved up. And uh, so I've been looking, I've been looking for regular work, which is going to kind of take me away from videos and other things I do, because right now I can be at home. Once I start working outside of the home, I don't know what that's going to do because it's been many years since I've had to do that. But that's what I'm looking to do. Anyways, this thing is like 53 minutes and counting, and uh, I don't want to pull a fluff, <laughs> if you know what I mean. And um, I love you. I can't believe you. it's been just you and I. We might as well have FaceTimed or something, only uh, you had to type and I didn't. So if you want, you can call me. I am home. I'm just going to go clean this dish off and whatnot and clean up my mess. And I guess I'll see you on the flip side. <laughs> Love you, girl. If you want, like I said, call me. Just give me about five minutes so I can get rid of my dish. Okie dokie. I'm signing out of here if I can figure out how. Oh, here it is. End stream.